session we were talking about compassion and sympathy and, and what the difference is between the two of them. And uh, we've already learned that it, it's compassion that moves us to do because compassion causes us to go into action. Sympathy, we just can easily pass by people without doing anything. So um, this session we're going to be talking about in session two, we're going to be talking about what is our mandate and we're going to go into the tools of evangelism so that we can understand um, how we go about evangelizing. You know, from session one, we were talking about um, heaven and hell as well. And, you know, one of the things we have to keep in mind is that it's a cruel attitude for us to watch people going to hell and not be moved. It is the Father's heart that none perish. How can we not be moved? How will they know if we don't tell them? You know, the word tells us in Luke 9, 26, for whoever will be ashamed of me and of my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. You see, being ashamed of Jesus means being unwillingly, unwilling to identify yourself as a follower of Jesus Christ because of fear, because of embarrassment, because of a humiliation, ridicule, or disapproval. Look at Jesus' life. All of that happened to him, yet he continued to do the work that he was given. You know, many years ago, the Lord had given me a vision of hell, and this is what prompted me to do what I do, why I want to speak to people about Jesus Christ. I asked the Lord to show me his heart for the lost, and he gave me a, vid a vivid vision of what I knew to be hell. I saw the smoke, I saw the fires burning, I heard the screams and I could feel the torment. I saw figures in the midst of the fire and smoke. But what I heard is what has never left me to this day. And those words were, why didn't they tell me? Why didn't they tell me? I wept uncontrollably that day, but I still cannot get rid of that vision. And that's what causes me to go out and talk to people about Jesus Christ. Because the one thing that I know is that I do not ever want to be held accountable for not doing my part in telling people about Jesus Christ. I don't want them to go to hell because I was afraid, because I was fearful, because I was lazy and uncomfortable to share the true gospel of Jesus Christ when it changed me and transformed me. If we don't have a vision to see the lost saved, know this, they will perish. If we say we know and love God, then it will entail us having a passion for the lost. The book of Acts is so different from the Christianity that we have today. We have domesticated it, we've tamed it, we've made it safe, we've made it secret friendly. And let's be careful not to be too heavy on the sin part. To be born of God is to be made a citizen in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is at war. War against the enemy of God, against anything that is not of God. Many are in bondage. They see no way out. And where are we? Look at the Israelites. They were in bondage and saw no way out until God sent Moses. We cannot detach ourselves from the pain and the brokenness that we see all around us. People are fearful. They're crying out. They're looking for freedom from their bondage. And we must have the heart of the Father, a heart burning with passion for the unsaved. We need to see the lost, the hurting, and the dying as God sees them. You and I can be the Moses that God sends to bring salvation, to bring healing, and to bring deliverance. Did you know that as a covenant people that we are to share the gospel of Jesus Christ? But instead, are we building for ourselves here on earth instead of building for the kingdom of God? Has our Christianity become so tamed and become so safe that we've lost our perspective of what we have been called to do? We are not to be quiet about this gospel. We are to reach out to the lost. I mean, it's going to take. A, I mean, it's going to be a risky for some of us until we begin to do it. If we say that we are true disciples of Jesus Christ, then we are going to do what our Master did. He went to the places where the sinners were. 
What would happen if we realized the importance of growing the courage to reach out to the sinner as if our house was on fire? Would we not do everything we possibly could to save what was precious, what was important? Well, can I tell you, that's who the lost and the sinners are. They're on fire. Are we doing anything to save them? Because they are of importance to the Father. Your growing, your courage to reach the loss will be the very difference in saving their life from eternal damnation. Now let's look at this next scripture. The word go in Mark 16, 15 is a clear mandate given to each one of us. And he said to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. We are his hope agents. This word is God's authority. It's his power of attorney, to attorney for you and I to perform on his behalf. You can do what it says you can do. You can take the message of salvation to the lost to heal the sick and cast out demons to raise the dead and speak in new tongues. God has chosen us to be his agents. He's given us the high honor of operating on his behalf, and he has promised to empower us and to use us in the process of making disciples. Our personal agenda till the day we die is to be like Jesus. Jesus was clear in his directives to us. We are to love God. We are to love others. We are to repent of our sins and believe in him and spread this good news throughout the land. God's salvation was never meant to be kept a secret. Jesus preached to thousands in the name of the Father, warning, teaching, and healing them. So why is it that we are not doing the same? Many Christians go, do not go because they have weak spirits. They are fearful. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God did not give us a spirit that makes us afraid, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-control. Solomon reminds us in Proverbs 29.25, The fear of man is a snare, but he who trusts the Lord will be safe. So many of us have faced fear, fear of man, fear of the unknown, which can halt us from putting in the effort to evangelize. Some of those unknowns are, well, he might not listen to me. Well, what if I lose my friendship with them because I want to tell them about Jesus? Well, what if they ask me questions that I can't answer? What if they reject me and ridicule me? Can I tell you that you're, you're going to face some of these? I have, but I realize too that Jesus and his disciples went through the same things. Many don't want to go because they're lazy and they're apathetic. Proverbs 6, verses 6 to 9 says, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Observe her ways and be wise. It has no commander or overseer or ruler. Yet it would prepare its food in the summer. It gathered at the harvest what it will eat. How long, you sluggard, will you lie there? When will you rise from your sleep? Proverbs 10.26 says, Like vinegar to the teeth and like smoke to the eyes, so is the slugger to those who send him. Proverbs 26.14, Like a door that turns on its hinges, so a slugger turns on his bed. You see, one thing we can see from these scriptures is that laziness is destructive. And the failure of men to engage diligently, diligently in work is a violation of the word of God. A lazy man accomplishes nothing and only hinders progress. The sluggard is too lazy to get out of bed, although he would probably rationalize it by saying that he's not at his best in the morning. See, as a door swings back and forth and goes nowhere, so is the lazy person. Many have no interest or concern and lack motivation to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. A lazy person will use excuses to get out of doing kingdom work, yet they have time to hang out with their friends. They have time to play video games. The lost are a low priority to the lazy man. The result of laziness will only bring spiritual poverty. Your spirit must be in the right condition to go for Jesus. It must be full of strength, joy, and power. Your life must be transparently joyful, filled with hope, even when we're going through trials and troubles but we need to share that gospel. They will wonder 
Why are you being so joyful when you're going through what you are? You can let them know too that, that where your joy and your strength come from, they too can have it, that it's available for them. A strong spirit is obtained through reading the Bible, through praying in tongues and worshiping Jesus. So you want to strengthen your spirit in, in order to go and evangelize, to take the word of the Lord to those that need to hear? Then there are some things that you and I must do then. We need to read the word. We need to get the word in us. We need to be praying in tongues at all times because it's our spirit with his spirit. It's a way that we hear from God himself for what we are to do, where we're to go, what we're to say. And we must worship Jesus. And that, that's not just it through singing. and it's, it's through our lifestyle, how we live our life daily. You see, the relationship that you and I have with the Lord and the word that is planted in us will give us the confidence and the boldness that we will need in order to do the job that God is asking us to do. If we ourselves do not believe the sufficiency of the gospel for ourselves, we will never be able to share it boldly or confidently or simply. When we are convinced that God's word does the work of conversion through the power of the Holy Spirit, then we will boldly share the simple gospel through the power of the Holy Spirit. A gospel that can save by grace through faith, apart from works as a free gift, and it will be believed by those that we're sharing it with. Uh, I'm sorry here. Uh, be convinced of the sufficiency of God's word to do his work for his purposes and be confident in the ability of the gospel to transform lives uh, by proclaiming the good news with sacrificial love to the lost in the hope that they will accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The next thing that we are to do is to go tell. Mark 5:19 says, go to your home and to your people and tell them what the Lord has done for you, that he had mercy on you. Mark 16, 15 says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So you see, we can see that it doesn't say only tell the people that you're comfortable with. It states, go therefore and tell all people, not a select few, it includes everyone from the business person down to the drug addict to the prostitute. It's all manners of people. You know, everyone has a testimony. John 4, 28 to 29 is the story of the woman at the well. She had an encounter with Jesus. And it says, then the woman left her water jar, went off into the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I've ever done. Surely he can't be the Messiah, can he? She had encountered Jesus. She had ex experienced his compassion and his mercy. That she could, she could not contain what had happened to her in those few moments that she had with Jesus. All that she said when she went to her town, she kept her testimony short and sweet and to the point. She kept it short. But one thing I can tell you is that no one can ever refute your testimony because it's personal and it's yours, just like hers. But we are to preach the good news, not a bad news. A bad example is, for instance, you're a dirty sinner, quit drinking and smoking, or you're going to go to hell, or stop living with that person because you're just on your way to hell if you do. You see, this isn't good news. It's, any, it's anything that will cause one to turn away. This will cause them to not want to listen to you. They've already shut you off. So we must come to them with a, something that is good news because you see, more than likely when they shut you down, when you come at them negatively, it's because you see, they've already heard this. That's why they are where they're at. They've heard it over and over before and they don't need to hear it again. What we need to let them know is that, they, that there is a hope for their life, that they have a future, that God has plans for them, that he loves them more than they could ever imagine or ever understand. Because this is what they've not had. The Holy Spirit can give you the words that you've never thought of. Mark 13, 11 says this, Do not worry about what you're going to speak, but say whatever is given to you at that time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. You know, a friend and I were in the park, um, I believe it was last summer, and uh, we ran across this young lady, and 
we could see that she um, was very troubled. She looked like she may be um, alcoholic or maybe a drug addict. We weren't sure. But uh, we began to speak with her and uh, I, I said to her, you know, I'd like to hear a little bit about you. And she began to share her story with us. And as she was sharing her story, the Lord showed me that she had been sexually abused uh, by a family member. Um, but the Lord told me when she was done that I was to share my story with her. And as I began to share what happened to me as a child through a family member, she began to cry uncontrollably. I asked her if she was addicted to drugs, to which she was. I told her about the love of God and his plan for her life, and that the drugs, that, that she was only using them to cope with what had happened to her, but that wasn't her problem. And so I began to share with her how I came out of what happened to me. I was never addicted to drugs, but I was sexually abused. So I was able to share with her how the Lord had brought me out of that and how I was able to forgive those uh, for doing what they had done to me. So you see how important it is to take the time to hear what is being said by those that you're sharing the gospel with. It is so important to take the time to hear what Holy Spirit wants you to do in order to meet their needs. You can share that word of knowledge with them then that the Lord gives you and so that they can see that God cares that much about them, that he would reveal it in order for them to know that he truly is real, that he truly loves him, loves them. So be open to hear what God has to say because if we rush in and we just want to push everything that we have on them, well, they'll shut down. Let's hear them speak and let's hear what God wants to add to that, what he wants to say because he knows where they hurt and he wants to put his finger on that very place where they hurt. Now, let's, let's talk a little bit about some tools for evangelism. What are some of those tools? And I'll probably be sharing some of this in session three as well. But we're going to start with the first one that is key, and that is love is your greatest soul winning tool. You have to remember what spirit you're of. We are God's children. We belong to Him. And with the ministry of the Holy Spirit in us, He is at work in our lives. It is God who makes us stand firm in Christ. He anointed us. He set a seal of ownership uh, on us. And He put His Spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. He has called every one of us to be his voice to the lost world, to proclaim his good news. We are to show forth his love by bringing his message and his love to them. Jesus is the ultimate example of love. He is love. And what he did on the cross for us was his love. It was because of his great love and his mercy that you and I are able to stand here today. Love must be the defining characteristic of every follower of Jesus Christ. Love is the very character and the very nature of who Christ is. And it must be evident in each one of us in order to reflect Jesus to others. It is the fruit of the Spirit. So anyone who walks in the fruit will demonstrate God's love in dealing with people. If we say we love God, we must love with all that we are by sharing the gospel to give hope and love to our neighbors as ourselves, Everything else will follow correctly if we have these two things right. His love in us will drive us to go and tell. His love will exude from our very being and be experienced by those that we share the gospel with. We possess the best news in the world and, the love, and that love in us propels us to share it with those who have yet not heard the, the word. Love wants everyone to have a chance to respond to God's offer of salvation. Withholding news that could save someone's life is of the utmost cruelty. Therefore, those who truly love God will love the people whom Jesus came to save. We must always be ruled and dominated by love. Love must be that force that drives us. If you do not have love for the lost, you will not be effective. Winning a heart over for Jesus is done in and through love. Love is the most important aspect of sharing our faith as we read in 1 Corinthians 13. And I would encourage you to read it because it was through love that you and I were saved in the first place. So don't argue because a soft answer turns away wrath. 
A gentle or soft answer will turn away wrath by neutralizing any potential tense or explosive situation that might come. A harsh word does the opposite. Rather than dissolving anger, it's going to charge it up. Whatever you speak, do it in love, gentleness, and kindness. You are called to proclaim the gospel, not to defend it. Our job is simply to give out His Word and to allow His Word to do its perfect word, work. Remember, His Word is the power, according to Romans 1.16, and it is in His power that will change and transform lives. Going beyond that by arguing and debating is a distraction, and it's a time waster, and it should be avoided at all costs. Philippians 2 verses 14 to 15 tells us to do everything without arguing and complaining. So don't debate, just share the truth in love.